Hi, I'm Debbie Giordano, and welcome back to Valley Homes on TV with Edwin Rosello, our co-host today. And uh, we've got Todd Flesner from Stern Mortgage Company. Uh, Todd, why don't you, you're located locally here. You do mortgages locally in Milpitas? Correct, I do. I uh, work throughout Silicon Valley. My office actually is physically lo located in Palo Alto, but I live here in the Milpitas community, so I'm active in, in this area quite a bit with uh, my, my family and all the activities that we have going on. And your on. wife is active in the schools? Mm -hmm. She is. She's yes. active in PTA and the 4-H club and uh, Girl Scouts and um, it's hard to keep track of her. She's uh, Wow, that's very, everything. Very busy. So you are very integrated into the community. Absolutely. We um, love Milpitas. As we begin the show, and I'll also ask you, how can folks reach you if they have questions after the show? Well, it's easy to reach me via email. And my email address is Todd at sternmortgage.com. It's Todd, T-O-D-D, and Stern Mortgage uh, is all one word, and I believe it's on the screen, so folks can pick up on the spelling of that. Very Great. good. So Very good. good. Well, let's talk about rates. Where are interest rates? Well, interest rates have um, actually come down a bit over the last several months, uh, starting to tick back up again. Right. Um, but I as we look back in time, historically, we're about the lowest rates that have been in the last two years. And so, in the, the grand scheme, rates really are fantastic right now. There's been a lot of volatility in the market, right. however. And uh, we see rates swing back and forth anywhere from a oh, quarter to half a percent within a range um, based on what's happening in the financial markets and the world at large. You know, there's a lot of things that impact right. the interest rate that you're going to pay on the mortgage that you have. Right, right. Now, the conforming loan limits, which used to be 417000 are now at 729000 729750 just, so, okay, just good. shy of 730000 Right. And that's part of the economic stimulus package, where we now can do those loans up to those higher loan amounts. And those loans are now purchased by Fannie Mae and Jeannie Mae. Um, government-backed loans. So it, it's really opened up the market. Um, it, let me just ask you, just to dovetail off on that, I read in the San Jose Mercury not just more than a few days ago mm -hmm. that rates were the highest they've been in the last two or three months. What, mm -hmm. what does that uh, account for? How does that happen? Well, if, if I could, I know yes. there's a, there's, mm -hmm. first I want to put something in there. It's something I say we, we said on this program, we see on our San Jose program, statistics can tell you anything. So it's, 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 it's the first thing I caught is the highest rates in the last two or three months. Well, in the last two or three months, they haven't really fluctuated that much. Well, again, th there's been that volatility within a fairly narrow range. Right. And that's due to what's happening in the market. Um, you know, gas prices? It, gas prices have had a big impact on that. And really, the, the not so much the gas prices, but the, the fear of inflation that the higher gas prices okay. really drives. And... Um, you have to keep in mind that really a mortgage is an investment tool for investors. Um, you know, in the old days, you used to pull open the newspaper and, and open the business section, and you see a list of all the stocks that were available for purchase. Well, <clears throat> in addition to that, there are thousands and thousands of mutual funds as well. In fact, there are more mutual funds out there than there are individual stocks. And each of those funds has a fund manager and they're competing against all the others for the best rate of return, in addition to the insurance companies and others who are investing in the market. Well, there's a tug of war for investment dollars between stocks um, and bonds. And bonds are where we get the money for mortgages. A bond actually is what is used to fund that mortgage ultimately. And so when the stock market is on, on the rise, and you can get a better rate of return there, the interest rates have to come up as well to match that. Um, likewise, inflation has a big impact on mortgages because that, that bond is a fixed rate of return over time. Well, then let me ask you. Um, just Friday, a few days ago, the stock market plunged mm -hmm. 400 points. Right. We have to, it's been correcting a mm -hmm. little bit the last few days <coughs> since today's Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Will interest rates fall? Is um, a direct result of that? Well, what we've seen... the bond mm -hmm. rate decrease? When, when, when the stock market goes down, typically you'll see the opposite with bonds. Bond rates will go up and, and interest rates will fall because the stock market is not as attractive. Now, the price of a bond and the rate are inverse. So it gets a little confusing okay, here so as we talk about this. Okay, so bond rate goes up, 
interest rates go down. Correct. Okay. okay. I got but it. an interesting Please. way that an analogy that's been described to me is the, the money tends to flow out of one pot into the other. That's so correct. So it flows out of the stock pot, mm -hmm. and it flows into the bond market pot, mm -hmm. then bonds become more d in, in demand. Correct. And as a result, bond rates tend to come down a little bit. That's correct. Because people are demanding more. Let, mm -hmm. let me ask a quick question, and then you can finish up, and then before we go to FHA, I want to make sure we have time for okay. some FHA financing. Okay, I'm still but on the hook waiting for the rest of the answer, because that was really... <laughs> uh, uh, did you finish? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to cut you off. Well, like I said, there's a, there are a lot of dynamics in the market. Right. And, you know, if you, if you think about it, you know, again, um, investors are seeking the best rate of return that they can. And so the interest rates are going to be driven by that. What other alternatives investors have? And so the bond market is the place that we look, and we look for the rate of return. The other thing we were talking about is inflation and the fact that inflation will erode the value of that bond over the course of time. That is, that fixed rate of return, the fixed payment you're getting, is worth less in the future right. because the dollar doesn't buy as much. And therefore, that's why interest rates have to come up because an investor wants a higher return because his no, he knows his investment is not worth as much in future dollars. Right. And so the, you have all these dynamics, and, and that's what adds to the uh, volatility that we see is there's this fight going on on Wall Street for investment dollars. And so it is good to have somebody on your team that has a pulse on what's happening in the market and what the directions are. And it can change quickly, as right. we saw you know, this last summer when mortgage money basically evaporated. Okay, and let's so talk about <coughs> that pulse. Let's talk about that pulse. Would you advise your clients today to lock into a fixed rate mortgage? Would you look at a variable rate mortgage playing um, the, the interest rate game? You know, what, I, what I, would you recommend? I really like the fixed rate mortgages right now for a couple of reasons. One is, again, that inflation factor. I think that we're going to be in an environment where rates are kind of creeping up here in the future because of the cost of oil and the fact that everything is costing us more these days. So um, rates are relatively good historically, so it's a great time to lock, lock in a term long rate, long term. Um, Especially where you can get a house for very, very inexpensive as compared mm -hmm. to two years ago. Absolutely. Which we'll talk about those short sales. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, are you, oh, that, no, that's well, I wanted to kind of make sure we have time to touch on the FHA financing. Right. In fact, just this morning, with sharing with Todd, I got an offer on, on a property that's been on the market 30, 40, 45 days. We got an offer for FHA financing, So I and, and it's in the mid 500s. So I know that that's going to be a lot a prevalent now in the market. How does how does the finan uh, FHA financing work? Well, um, FHA has those higher loan limits just like the new conforming loan limits. So we can go up to the same... Uh, loan amount, 729, 750. Okay. All right, the difference is that FHA will allow a lower down payment, as low as 3%. So your traditional loans require a 20% down payment. FHA is a 3%. Um, credit score requirements are not quite as uh, stringent as well. So which, which is what you were talking right. about. So if you've had a couple of bumps and bruises, you know, in the road of life, and your credit is not uh, pristine, FHA may be a good alternative there's not a significant hit in terms of the interest rate for that. The one thing to be aware of is that FHA does require a mortgage insurance premium with it. Uh, one and a half percent of the loan amount up front. So some additional upfront costs for an FHA loan. Can the seller pay those costs? Yes, seller can pay those costs if it's, a, if it's in a purchase. Uh, there are a lot of creative ways to go about getting that <coughs> covered. But uh, just, just to know that there's a little bit of additional cost but it may be a great alternative for folks, particularly if um, if the credit is something and or the, the down payment is and something. And the rates that's, that's are work. pretty comparable to what is they, out there, and they, they're not much higher. No, or? not much at all. They're they're very very comparable. So it, it's a great alternative for folks. It is. It's got some advantages too. With a three percent down payment needed for an FHA, can be gifted through the Nehemiah program. That's correct. And okay. with the FHA program, you know, if someone doesn't have to have a seven hundred. Fifty or an eight hundred fifty credit score, it can go down to what five eighty, five twenty. Yeah, we can go down to the five eighty range, but, which is which is pretty good. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah, and many homes now fall into that price range of what the FHA loan limits will do. That's correct. So, and there are some FHA loans that don't have a credit score requirement. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Wow. We um, got to talk. Yeah, there you 